enlivened that devotee. And they all think that Krishna, just like we see in the Rasa dance, every gopi was thinking that Krishna was dancing with me, except for Srimati Radharani. She was the only one who could see that Krishna was dancing with others. Because her possessiveness of Krishna is so strong that she could see it. Because she is Krishna's counterpart. So when she saw that Krishna was dancing with others, then she left. And Krishna left. And so, but the other gopis were a little proud, thinking that Krishna is exclusively dancing with me. And so, and the point is that uh, Krishna, there is a best devotee. And who is that best devotee? That devotee who reveals Krishna to us. This is what's the meaning of this verse. Antaryamki Bhakta Shrashta. The Bhakta Shrashta, the best devotee, just like Krishna did when he instructed in, in the Bhagavatam, he said that Uddhava is definitely topmost devotee, because no one is so intimate to me as Uddhava. Even Lakshmi, even Brahma and Shiva and Lakshmi are not so dear. Sometimes I'm with them, and sometimes I instruct them, but with Uddhava, we are friends. And of course Krishna had that same intimacy with Arjuna. And when there is that type of intimacy, then one can understand Krishna. So in the same way, that intimacy that the devotee feels with the instructing spiritual master is makes that instructing spiritual master, who may be the Diksha Guru or may be the Shikshu. Uh, in traditional, uh, and Srila Prabhupada, uh, when he refers to this, in traditional Vaishnavism, the main instructing guru is the Diksha Guru because the disciples live with the Diksha Guru for so many years in Guru Kula and, and they may live in his ashram and so he is the main he's the Diksha Guru and the Shikshu Guru but in a society, in a plural society like we have so many people giving uh, initiation so many senior devotees traveling around so many senior devotees in each yatra instructing the other devotees that the Shiksha Guru may be more, we can't say more uh, in better or higher, but more relevant. Even a local, one very local devotee who may not be anywhere near the stature of one's initiating spiritual master, but he may be the most relevant instructing guru. So instructing guru is a very uh, broad category. And also, there are different types of Shiksha Guru. There is a Shiksha Guru who simply uh, inspires us by seeing them. This is, uh, let's read a little because it speaks about this in the purple. There are two kinds of instructing spiritual masters. One is the liberated person, fully absorbed in meditation and devotional service. And the other is he who invokes the disciples' spiritual consciousness by means of relevant instruction. So here, there are many devotees who may inspire us by, the, by their example, by being absorbed in devotional service on the liberated platform. Meaning that they may be uh, nitya siddhas or they may be sadhana siddhas. And by their acting on the liberated platform and seeing their example, we may be inspired. So in that kind of Shiksha Guru, there may be unlimited quantities of devotees who inspire us. And then, there is the other type of instructing spiritual master, who invokes the disciples' spiritual consciousness by means of relevant instruction. So this is someone who is intimately connected to us. Who we have accepted, either is our Diksha Guru, or our Shiksha Guru who is giving us relevant instruction, meaning Instructions that, that guide us in our daily practice or our ongoing practice of Krishna consciousness. So, uh, these, these are two positions. So one can have also many devotees who instruct one, but the one who awakens one's spiritual consciousness, you know, which is called Diksha or Divya Bhyana, 
Whoever awakens within the heart, this is Srila Prabhupada is actually paraphrasing that, that uh, defining that what he's saying, that Divya Jan Vidya Prakashita. Whoever awakens within the heart, relevant Divya Jan, transcendental spiritual instructions for the guidance of the devotee, that is the main guru, be it the Diksha Guru or Shishu Guru. So, many people, just like I tried to emphasize yesterday a little bit. Many people take initiation and they think that now I'm initiated. But here we see that, that Krishna Das Karvajas Goswami and Srila Prabhupada in his purport are emphasizing the importance of the Shiksha Guru. Meaning that we all need to have relevant and ongoing instructions on how to proceed in spiritual life. There are some persons, like Srila Prabhupada, who give the example of giving an instruction from the spiritual master and, and making it one's life and soul and taking, even though the spiritual master may not be present. So, generally speaking, such a devotee, devotees are on a more advanced level. They can actually take the instruction of the spiritual master and make it their life, their life's work their life's goal to fulfill those instructions. Even though they were, Prabhupada said, I had very little association with my guru. How many times was Prabhupada with him? Uh, maybe uh, five, six times, Prabhupada was with his, his spiritual master. And each time was for a very short period. Because in all that time, Prabhupada was a great with children and responsibilities. He would come the first time he got, uh, he came to a few lectures. The second time, you know, uh, he came for one day. He saw his, he saw his guru for one lecture. Never spoke to him. Uh, and, he, and, and, and then the third time was at his initiation. And then Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, Yes, I know him. He likes to hear. And he gave the first and second fourth time, I think they met somewhere, I can't remember, and then the fifth time was in Radhakul, maybe five times. And Prabhupada, but those instructions, and Radhakul was the longest time, and those instructions, and then the last instruction was, even after Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur had left the plan, Prabhupada received a letter, there was no email, no, uh, no Facebook, so. Uh, got the instruction after his group left, and he said uh, that uh, you should uh, preach this Krishna consciousness. That will be good for you and good for others. And so that was his instruction. And Prabhupada took it down. So there are some devotees who either permanently or temporarily have a, a very serious moment in their, in their spiritual life and they take the instructions of the spiritual master very seriously. But most people need to have ongoing instruction, and therefore, the, the, therefore Srila Prabhupada is, and, and Krishna Kaviraj Goswami emphasizing, and Srila Prabhupada is also emphasizing the, the importance of getting pertinent instructions in spiritual life by ongoing. And to never think, sometimes, just like I used to remember, people used to write me, now well, they don't do it so much anymore. But they used to write me all the time, saying, I'm chanting my 16 rounds following the principle, which I always interpreted as, okay, I'm okay. No, no, no reason to meddle in my life. No, I'm okay. I'm properly situated. No, uh, no need to go any further. But such devotees should understand, or just like we see, and in normal, today there's a few more people, even than normal, even with all the, the you know, most people have their quota, Pratyatra and the Shingai Thursday, that's like month, monthly quota. So, <laughs> uh, enthusiastic participation. So, uh, but there are some devotees here, but there could be many more people. But we're thinking, uh, just like that, I had my quota. Because, 
As I mentioned in, on several occasions, there are two ways to see spiritual life. That I have my life and I fit in, I fit into my life, my spirit, what I call my spiritual life. Which means I go on Sunday or I go on this day or I go into my service once a week, twice a week, whatever it may be, or once a month, whatever. That's one way. But that's not a very uh, efficient way to advance the spiritual life. The more efficient is that I have my spiritual life, which is everything. And then I have some duties which pertain to the body and the mind. And I, I have to perform. So my mind, psychologically, I need to be married, or I need this, or I need that. And that will help me to advance. But, but, but my reality is that there is only spiritual life. There's nothing else. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Aham Sarvasya Prabhu Mata Sarvam That I am the source of everything material and spiritual. So there's nothing outside the purview or the realm of Krishna consciousness. Nothing. There's nothing. You can't find anything outside of Krishna. And this particular verse is emphasizing that point. That Paramatma is always there. The instruction of Bhagavad Gita is always weighing on our uh, life and on our consciousness. So we should uh, take it very seriously. And that's what Peter Bhagavad is emphasizing in this first part. So I'll just continue. The instructions in the science of devotion of, of devotion are differentiated in terms of the objective and subjective ways of understanding. So let us analyze that a little bit. It might, might not be so easy to understand this early in the morning. So what does that mean? It means that objectively means that there are specific instructions on how to behave and how to perform the worship service. You do the offering at that this time, you cook and uh, you clean the floor. This is objective. And subjective means subjective instructions means that the internal development, objective, objective and subjective. Objective means what I do as, a, as an external discipline, how I carry out my devotional service. And subjective means how do I perform internally. So both of these things are emphasized by Shiva Prabhupada. Both are equally important. And actually, to, so that the objective response to devotional service or to the science of devotion uh, be proper, the subjective or the internal Realization must be constantly developed. Otherwise, uh, devotional service becomes a routine. We, uh, we all have that tendency. Mostly with japa. We become very, you know, I think if anybody analyzes oneself, we will find that this routine, this tendency to make japa routine, or any service. I hear many times people say, you know, I know I shouldn't do it, but it just seems like devotional service is the same thing every day. That's because one is on the, the objective platform without subjective development. Without the subjective development, even in the spiritual world, Sri Sanatana Goswami points out that in the spiritual world, all servers are doing the same thing every day. But when he does it, by his Lila Shakti, the devotees perceive the next day, the next day that everything is completely new, completely different. Krishna is new, Krishna is Nava Yamana Mucha. He's also new every day. He's very, uh, everything about him, his smile, everything is new and refreshing and, and different. Of course, Krishna is able to create unlimited uh, variety just in the spiritual spiritual realm and spiritual life. So, uh, objective and subjective ways of understanding. Both things should be there, internal and external. Our external performance of devotional service may depend on certain factors, like health. If we're sick, we can't do that type of external devotional service. If we're getting so old that our body doesn't work anymore, then uh, 
certain types of service that we can't perform. But subjective internal devotional service has to be very strong because at some point in time we will have to rely on the holy name. Maybe we'll run out of money. Maybe we'll have a, a bad situation in life. And then if there's no subjective, then you will put it, be put into anxiety and you'll think, now I have to stop chanting and start working. I have to have more money. I have to have this, I have to have that. Because we're on the external path. So both things have to be developed nicely. Internal development means that we hear about Krishna. We hear about Krishna's pastimes. We hear about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. And then our internal development gives us strength for the most important activity, which is, which is chanting the Holy Name. If you hear enough about Krishna, then chanting will be very relishable. Because the, the chanting in itself will invoke remembrance of Krishna's forms, qualities, and pastimes. If you don't hear about these things regularly, then chanting will be very difficult. Very difficult. So, uh, just read on a little more. The Acharya, in the true sense of the term, who is authorized to deliver Krishna, enriches the disciple with full spiritual knowledge and thus awakens him to the activities of devotional service. So, combining that with what we just spoke about, it means that the spiritual master must, uh, as Srila Prabhupada said one time, must break his head, meaning devise different means by which the disciple can develop you know, and, and, and be enlivened in Krishna consciousness. Sometimes we're not so expert because we're dealing with so many people in so many different places. It's hard to keep everybody on. Therefore, everybody must rely on those shiksha gurus that are most relevant to their lives. Because this is an active principle. Later on, Jitani Charitamrita, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami says that the um, spiritual master is the active principle in devotional life. And that principle that makes devotion manifest within our hearts and within our lives and within our activity. So, then Srila Prabhupada says, when by learning from the self-realized spiritual master, one actually engages himself in the service of Lord Vishnu, functional devotional service began. What is that called? The procedures of this devotional service are known as abhidhe, or action one is duty bound to perform. Our only shelter is the Supreme Lord, and one who teaches how to approach Krishna is the functioning form of the personality of God. So, uh, there has to be someone who engages us in devotional service and who brings us to the Abhideya Bhakti. We'll speak a little more about that in the last paragraph. There is no difference between the shelter-giving Supreme Lord and the initiating and instructing spiritual master. So we sing every day, Sakshad Haritva, that directly seeing Haritvena, that uh, there is no difference between you, Tva, and Hari. This is what Krishna Chakravarti said, that uh, because you are the functional form, you are the manifestation of Krishna who tells us what to do. Two parampara, of course, not that you know, it just comes from nowhere. Although I was definitely reading some purports yesterday uh, where I saw that Krishna Chakravarti Thakur gave some ideas when I was reading about the pastime in the Singha day. But Srila Prabhupada expanded it in such a way that it wasn't just fluffing out what Vishwana said, he actually added in his own realization. So when someone's on the platform of Srila Prabhupada, then we will have realizations that come directly from the local Vrindavan. But every devotee who preaches should have some realization. Otherwise, it's just, you know, repeating something.
something that someone uh, could have read somewhere else. Of course, that's also realization if you can combine things nicely from different places and make it make the point relevant. That's also realization. Realization is not just you know something coming from below the window into my head, and I just you know like we see sometimes Krishna now in the tenth canto, he just starts talking about some pastime of Krishna with the gopis, and and one gopi said this, and Radharani said this, and Krishna said this. And then they retorted with this, and then they came back with this. You know, and we see that somehow. But that is uh, that is that kind of realization can only come from such a personality. If we try to do that, then we will simply speculate. If one foolishly discriminates between them, he commits an offense in the discharge of evil. But now comes a very, very important paragraph. We should try to hear this very carefully, very important instruction. Srila Sanatana Goswami is the ideal spiritual master, for he delivers one the shelter of the lotus feet of Madana Mohan. Even though one is unable to travel on the field of Vrindavan, do for. Now, this is important how Prabhupada says this. He doesn't say travel to Vrindavan. Travel on the field of Vrindavan. What does that mean? It means that we could be situated in Vrindavan right here in uh, Chagwana, in London village. That on the field of Vrindavan means consciousness, spiritual consciousness, the consciousness of Vrindavan, which Advaita Charya said to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that my dear Lord, what does it matter if you go to Vrindavan? Because wherever you are, that is Vrindavan. So be on the field of Vrindavan. Very interesting phrase from Srila Prabhupada. Uh, due, for, due to forgetfulness of his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, um, um, due to that forgetfulness, he cannot, he's not unable, he's unable to travel. Otherwise, it means that if we're unable by our own level of consciousness to be situated in Vrindavan on that field, here's what we do. He can get adequate opportunity to stay in Vrindavan and derive all spiritual benefits by the mercy of Sanatana Goswami. So this is called <coughs> uh, Samman. The, the Madhana Mohan deity is the Samman the deity. And Sri Sanatana Goswami is the Samman Acharya. And the initiating spiritual master is the Sammanda Guru, giving the basis of how to connect with Krishna, how to understand Krishna, how to enter into Krishna Tattva. This is the beginning of spiritual life, and is specifically the duty of, his, uh, of the initiating spiritual master to give that. However, in this time, uh, because of it's a preaching movement, sometimes that duty is given to the instructing spiritual master. In most cases, the instructing spiritual master is the one who teaches devotees the basics of Krishna consciousness when it's supposed to be the initiating the spiritual master. So these roles get very interchanged in, in the context and the complexity of our preaching rules. Sri Govindaji acts just like the Shiksha Guru, instructing spiritual master. By teaching Arjuna Bhagavad Gita. This is very interesting. He is the original preceptor, for he gives us instructions and an opportunity to serve him. And this is the last part, which is very interesting. The initiating spiritual master is the personal manifestation of Sri Madana Mohan Vigraha, whereas the instructing spiritual master is a personal representative of Sri Govinda Dev Vigraha. Both these deities are worshipped at Vrindavan. Sri Gopina is the ultimate attraction in spiritual realization. So, these are the three main deities of Vrindavan. Vrindavan Mohan, Govinda Ji, and Gopina. Vrindavan Mohan, the Sambandha deity, the deity that represents 
establishing ourselves with uh, in spiritual life. And Sri Govindaji is the deity who instructs. Otherwise, the Govinda deity, if you go to Govinda and you, you beg his mercy, he will give you the understanding of Bhagavad Gita. And his representative is the instructing spiritual master. And then there is the Gopina deity, who is the Prayojana deity. And who is the Prayojana guru? Otherwise, why is it that Raghunath Goswami is the Prayojana? Because he was speaking mostly about Sri Mati Raghunath. So Prayojana means that realm, that aspect of, of Goloka Vrindavan, where Krishna is intimately related to the Gopi and Sri Mati Raghunath. So, just to illustrate that, I tell a little story that you can understand. When <clears throat> Gopal Bhatta Goswami, he was young, he was younger than Rupa and Sanatana. And uh, uh, who is the, I'm trying to remember, who was the caretaker of Gopi at that time? Uh, hmm? Hmm? No, it wasn't. Sanatana Goswami, he said, a 
amazing that, that the legs of this deity are exactly like Madame Mohan. Exactly like Madame Mohan. And then, uh, when Rupa Goswami came, he saw the face of the deity and he said, amazing, the face of this deity is just like Govindaji, exactly like Govindaji. And then, Excuse my repugnant of Amidepo's realization. I'm speaking about revelations there. Uh, taking care of the Gopi Nadi, he said, I can't believe it. His chest and his arms are just like Gopi Nadi. So then Gopal Bhatta realized that he, he had always admired the legs because the legs of the Madame Mohan deity represent Sambandha. Sambandha is supporting. So the legs are supporting, they're very, if you see Maran Mohan's legs, they're very kind of thick, you know, they're very solid. And also uh, Radharaman's legs, we usually can't see them, but they're very solid. And the face of Govindaji is especially beautiful because he's revealing himself. You know, he's, he's instructing from the mouth of so the face of the Govindaji, yeah, the face of the Govindaji. And then the chest. And the arms were just like Gopinath because with the chest and the arms, Gopinath embraces the, the, the Gopi. So therefore, that is the Prayojana deity, or the deity, the ultimate manifestation of Krishna's pastime of the Gopi. So, Gopabhata was very happy that now I have all three main deities in one. And therefore, when you go and see Radha Raman, you can actually, in one sense, you get darshan of the three main deities. Therefore, Radharaman are very, very special. Very, very special. So I just told that story to show how what Srila Prabhupada is speaking about here in this last purport, in this last part of the purport here, that the Shikshi Guru, Gopi Govinda, how does Arjuna, when he's completely bewildered, completely bewildered and at the end of the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, what does he say? O Govinda. Otherwise, by saying Govinda, he's asking Govinda to, to instruct him. O Govinda. Srila Prabhupada comments that he was thinking, Govinda, you should please me. Govinda means, and Srila Prabhupada says in the purport, verses 32 to 35, first chapter, that Govindaji, you should uh, please me, because Govinda means he who pleases the senses. For Prabhupada said, it is not Govinda's duty to please our senses. It is our duty to please Govinda's senses. So, uh, that is the point that I was making. That if we're in constant contact with the super soul from within, and the instructions of the spiritual master, coming from Krishna, who is the ultimate instructing spiritual master of Bhagavad Gita, Uddhava Gita, all the instructions are ultimately coming from Him. If we're in touch with Him through the uh, Bhakta Shrestha, the best devotee or the spiritual master who is instructing us, then uh, there's no question of deviating from the path of Krishna consciousness. But if we're not in touch, if we think, uh, okay, the spiritual master is coming, so let us all go to the temple. And then when he's not there, there's no one in the temple. No one in the Bhagavad Gita class. No one in the Bhagavad Gita class. And this means that we cannot even, we're not even in touch with Paramatma. We're not hearing Bhagavad Gita. If we're hearing Bhagavad Gita, we will see the necessity to associate with Vaishnava. The necessity to be hearing and chanting um, and performing devotional service in a very meaningful way. And therefore, Srila Prabhupada says, objective and subjective. You cannot make Krishna consciousness simply subjective. You can't just have some conception. Well, I'm, I'm a nice devotee. I'm an advanced devotee. I, I know it is, or uh, I'm better than most devotees in the temple. What's the need of going and hearing from someone who's less advanced than me? So if we're on this subjective platform, Subjective platform is very wonderful. 
if it is being guided by the proper inspiration coming from superior Vaishnava. It's a very wonderful platform. Because it's what keeps us uh, happy in devotional service. And if we but if we if we're just on that platform by our own realization, which may not be very deep, then our objective, because from the subjective platform, the objective platform will manifest. So we can actually uh, evaluate our subjective understanding of Krishna consciousness by how am I performing devotional service, just like Siddha Prabhupada says in the teachings of Kapila Day, that every day, every night, one should evaluate. What did I do for Krishna? What did I do for him? This way, uh, we can see by our objective manifestation of devotional service, what is my subjective realization and understanding. If I do the minimum, then my subjective platform is not raised. It means I'm not hearing and chanting properly. If I'm doing the minimum, if I can't find enough service, if I want to do more, I'm begging for service, and I'm begging, and I want to chant the holy name, not that I, you know, thank God I'm finished with these rounds. If we don't think like that, if we think, I would like to chant all day, but unfortunately I have to go and do the puja, or I have to go to work, or whatever may be my specific function. Then we can understand that my subjective platform, my internal development, is, is, is happening, is going on. So these both things have to be, as I mentioned before. So I wanted to close with one um, two little pastime because she the probably emphasizes Sri Sanatana's model, meaning that he's emphasizing the basic platform of devotional service as the foundation of our devotion to Krishna. So Sri Sanatana Goswami when he was, when he uh, first, uh, well, for, well, let's go to the first, first part of that. Sanatana Goswami, the, the Manan Mohan deity, was actually worshipped. Another name for Manan Mohan was Manan Gopal. So, Sri Advaitacharya had these deities of Manan Gopal. And those deities somehow or another disappeared. And it was Sanatana Goswami who found them. And he found those deities and he kept them. And he kept them in a tree. And so there are different versions of this story, but you know, the most authorized one I found, which means more senior Vaishnava repeated it in this way. You know, because sometimes we elaborate on things and we extrapolate and make them more humanly interesting. You know. But anyway. Sri Sanatana Goswami was, he was a Goswami. So he would make some chapatis and some simple sabhi, sometimes without spices and without salt. So uh, he was feeling very bad. I mean, you know, some people say that the deity complained, you know, maybe he did. That, Why aren't you giving me any salt? And Sanatana Goswami said, I'm very old, what am I supposed to do? But I think the more authorized version is that he was feeling very bad, and I'm old, and I have to serve the deity, and I have to write, and I have to associate with, the, with uh, Rupa and the other Goswamis in order to reveal, which is our duty, the duty given to us uh, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was to reveal Vrindavan. So how can I go out and beg for, for my deity, you don't have time? So because he was feeling bad, then Madan Mohan, he made an arrangement that this one barge boat was coming up the Yamuna. At that time the Yamuna was very full. I'm not like you know, they were practically they cut off the Yamuna and it's sewer water. You know. So black, you know, the Yamuna is supposed to be black but not like nowadays. You know. Not gray. It's not even black, it's kind of gray. You know. So uh, of course they're they're making some advancement on bringing back the original Yamuna. So this man's boat got stuck right near where Sanatana Goswami was. So he, he was in distress. It was a boat full of merchandise. And 
Uh, some, some versions of the story said it also had salt. And even one version is that it was a boat full of salt. But anyway, the man, the, the very wealthy merchant whose boat it was, started asking people to help. And they said, well, it's very difficult to you have a big boat. And I mean, even if we got so many people together, we don't think we can dislodge it. At this time of year, the moon is low, and there are many sand, sandbanks. So even if we get past one, we'll probably get another. But you can go to Sanatana Goswami, because Srila Prabhupada explained, whenever there's a problem in Vrindavan, everybody went to Sanatana Goswami to figure, get the solution. So we, in spiritual life, go to the representative of Sanatana Goswami to look at the solution. So, he went to Sanatana, and Sanatana said, what can I do? I, here is my deity, you can pray to my deity. And of course the man saw deities in a tree. No, didn't even have a, a roof. And the man prayed, and by Sanatana Goswami's inspiration, that night there was a huge storm. And the storm, it rained so much that the Yamuna filled up, and the boat was released. And the man was able to get the boat to the market and made huge profits. And he came back and he offered Sanatana Goswami, let me build you a beautiful temple. Because it was your deity that saved me. So he built a beautiful temple for uh, uh, Mohan. And then Sanatana Goswami every day, he would see some boys in, in, in Revati Raman. Uh, he would see the boy, uh, boy, young boys playing. And one day he saw this exceptionally beautiful boy. And, brought me right in my car. and this boy was never seen him before. And then all the boys dispersed, and this one boy ran into the temple. And Sanatana Goswami was so charmed by that boy that he went into the temple. But he looked around, and there was no boy. It was only the deity. And so it was so hard until he got out, but he didn't see him. So that night, he had a dream, and Madan Mohan said, I'm very pleased that you worship me so nicely, and you want to capture me within your heart. So therefore, I will come and visit you in the morning. I said, I'm going to blissful. And he woke up in the morning, and when he opened the door to his bhajan kutir, there was the deity standing there. So then I knew who that beautiful boy was who ran into the temple, it was the deity himself had come out and began to play with Sanatana Goswami. So this is the intimacy that we can have with the instructions coming uh, from the spiritual master, from Paramatma, from Krishna and Bhagavad Gita. If we simply dedicate ourselves, this Krishna wants this intimate relationship with us. He wants it. But we have to be exclusively Sarvadamam Paricha Jamamekam Shadanam Raja Aham Pram Sarvabhakya. We have to give up all unnecessary things, as Krishna says, exclusive devotion to Him, and not have any fear or anxiety that things will not work out. Krishna will take care of us. If we have these ingredients that Krishna requests of us, then uh, that intimacy of our relationship with Krishna starts from that point and becomes deeper and deeper. So this is the, these are some points on this particular verse of Adi Lila, the Nothing Spiritual Spiritual Master. I will stop here. Any comments or questions?
What for what can I say in this? Some people have a so I would take over this was in mind, you know, what what's his benefit? I'm to confine with him. What's the benefit of uh yeah. offering a book on it? Yeah, he's he's confident and it's you know convinced it's convinced they did it, but he doesn't want to do it, but he dreamed that. But that's in your foot to date it. You mean the person who cuts it? Yeah, who cut it that the mood would be the 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 vendor. Well, the benefit of anyone who does anything for the deity, whether it be consciously or unconsciously, there's some benefit. So exactly what benefit, how much someone benefits from Adyata Sapiti or from, from uh, which means devotional service which one has, does, is, is doing unknowingly, or how much benefit there is for someone who doesn't knowingly depends on their consciousness. Just like Raghavan uh, uh, did, he was also preparing coconuts to the deity. But he was so conscious he could walk miles to get coconut. And one day he came and brought three coconuts. And he had to go get some other ingredients. So he put the coconuts on top of the door so no one would see them. Because he didn't want them to be seen by anyone. Otherwise, they would think of enjoying the coconut and it would not be offered. But when he came back, he saw some footprints in the doorway. And he thought, these, these coconuts are useless. Somebody came in, and the dust from their feet must have gone up and touched the coconut, and therefore I can't at all. So, depending on the level of our consciousness, that's how much benefit we get for preparing the coconut. We're on the level of Raghava Pandit, then when we offer a coconut, his offering was so great that he was one of the four persons. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, whenever Raghava Pandit cooks, I am their person. Whenever he cooks. Whenever Mother Sachi offers, I am their person. So, if we, uh, so these are the examples of perfect devotion. What I'm trying to know is that when something is done, I Put it away, not in so long, because in second, and, and that's so deep, as you said. But um, should you explain for like, you know, feel something and you take it down immediately, or you can go get it and the journey, you know, let's put it out. Um, I thought about um, putting it away and then when it's over, then, but sometimes it's here, uh, mistakenly, or you know, by, uh, um, you, you pick up the water. We have something that is not covered yet in the beauty, but we learn it, discard it, and that can be interpreted according to your perception. Uh, so I'm thinking that, uh, like, um, anything of it, the end it shouldn't be. You mean if water is offered and the coconut is there? Yeah, the coconut is there, and, and the water is being offered. The, the water is being offered. That depends on the music. If, if I think that this is when offered to the deity, you know, and I want to take the, the husk, you know, then, but whatever we offer directly to the deity, that's what's offered. If we don't offer the coconut inside, then it's not directly offered to the deity, it's not Mahabrasad. If you just offer the water or some part of it, you know, leave the husk, you know, we're not going to eat the husk. We might use it to make a, uh, something out of it. Okay. Yes? Hi, uh, Jimmy. We were hearing that uh, hearing is most important mm -hmm. for the yogis. And, um, but we are thinking, you know, I, I, I could probably come to example like this. And I can hear this in Tobacco. You know, I could chant uh, Hare Krishna. Japa sometimes, uh, if you like to do or something. But what is the prescribed method of hearing and the results of hearing? Mm -hmm. And hearing attentive. That's real hearing. Prabhupada said one time, he said there's a difference between hearing and listening. Um, if you just listen to something, it doesn't go into the heart. So therefore, the Bible now says, when we hear in the association of the bodies who are very intent 
on uh, glorifying Krishna, uh, then that hearing will penetrate into the heart. So that's the type of hearing. The more the audience is qualified to convey that sense, that urgency of hearing, the more the speaker is able to reveal Krishna, then the hearing becomes better. But even if Srila Prabhupada sometimes was, was speaking and someone was sleeping. No. It was like one time uh, Prabhupada was giving a lecture in Los Angeles. And it's very common that devotees would come out, even that happens here anyway. So the bowl full of potatoes and some kind of vegetable and peeling the potatoes. So Prabhupada says, stop doing that. And, and the devotee said, well, I, Prabhupada said, why are you doing that? He said, well, Prabhupada, otherwise I'll fall asleep. And Prabhupada said, just hear. So, what was Prabhupada saying? That, that just hear means you have to have the intention of hearing. You have to come with the desire, I want to hear. Not that it's some automated process that I go to the temple because, you know, you're supposed to go to the temple and hear some Bhagavad Gita. No. You go to hear. I want to hear. I want to know how do we awaken, up, awaken that desire to hear? Because when we're in our home or in our ashram or whatever, we are also hearing. We open every every chance, we open the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, Shishupanishad, some, some nectarian you know, literature. About Krishna. And that increases the desire to hear. The more we hear, the more we want to hear. So, to increase and to make that hearing uh, uh, have a greater quality, then we should hear more. But we should avoid the idea that I'll just go and read in my home because, you know, that's easier. I can, I can go through more pages at home than in the Bible. Going and hearing from others means that I put myself in the submissive position, in the subordinate position. I am hearing from someone else. They will reveal to me, even if it's a very simple devotee who doesn't have a great deal of knowledge. That devotee may say something that comes from, from the devotee's heart, which is very wonderful. And even just even if they're not so expert in presenting the philosophy, just their mood, their desire to serve others by preaching Krishna consciousness will inspire us. So hearing depends on many different factors. But Prabhupada said the two main factors, Bhagavad Pradhana, that the speaker knows the Bhagavad Gita, and Shushu Shaya, that the hearer is eager, is eager to capture the message of the Bhagavad Gita. Which means, how do we become eager to to absorb the Bhagavad Gita. We become eager by doing our service enthusiastically. If we do it enthusiastically, then we want to hear to perfect and make our service better. So it shouldn't be mechanical, it shouldn't be, you know, it should be something meaningful. That okay? question and comment. Thank you all very much for uh, accepting me here, giving me your association. I hope to be back soon, probably in July, to get your association again. Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada,